All right, this is the Pro Wrestling Illustrated Podcast. I'm your host, PWI Senior Writer Al Castle. My co-host, Brian Solomon, is on assignment, as we say. So filling in uh, this week, uh, PWI contributing writer and host of the Those Wrestling Girls (laughs) uh, podcast, uh, Queen PR herself, Patricia Rogers. How are you? I am doing good. Thank you for having me. Yes, you jumped in a relatively short notice. I really appreciate it. Glad to, um, especially glad to have you uh, back on uh, because we are talking this week about, pull up the cover if I can. I should have been more prepared. I don't have my print issue yet, but I've got the digital edition. That is the Women's 250 issue. Uh, Yes, follow up to the PWA 500, which you can still get, but now the Women's 250 uh, is out at least a digital edition uh, is uh, Patricia yeah. is on the ranking uh, committee um, so we can talk about um, that issue and uh, other stuff lots going on since we were, were last here uh, we can talk some current events um, AW WWE maybe even a little TNA um, and uh, so let, let's let's get into it one you know I guess yeah. I could combine the the plugs with um, a discussion of the the women's uh, 250 you can get right now PWI hyphen online.com uh, you could be reading it as we speak um or have it delivered to your home the 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 paper copy the hard copy we've got bundles now where you can get uh both um either way the place to go is pwi hyphen online uh dot com uh my you know we were just talking a little bit about uh, before the show about how it's sort of an education process for, yeah. for both of us. Yeah. i'm not on the ranking committee but um i do some of the writing i write up the the top 10 every year and it's essentially you know, give it to me. Here's the top 10. Yeah. Yeah. I do out. not envy <laughs> that part of it at all. Um, and I, I was so fortunate. This was the third year I was asked to be on the committee. So I was a part of it when it was 150, 200, then 250. So just seeing that evolution has been amazing. And also the fact that there are over 250 women out there that could have easily um, been ranked in some way. And so a lot of people know I'm very WWE focused, just, you know, it's what I grew up on. I do dabble with AEW, I think Tony Storm. I don't think there was anyone else that deserved that spot um, more than her. Uh, But one thing about this year's committee that was so interesting is we had uh, some new people um, uh, join like Lyric Wrestling uh, was on the committee. And it's just always so impressive with the the capacity that people have to consume all of the wrestling out there enough to make valid arguments between someone being like 32 and 31, like that close. It's like, okay, but wait, what about that one match? on May 17th and it's like oh wow well, you're absolutely um, right and it's one of the things that you know when when you get uh and, and I'm all about criticism you know a, a, a productive good faith criticism but it's the one thing that you always you know I always try to communicate um to, to people whether it's the 500 or the women's uh 250 or or the tag team list that we're just getting started on I've been spending a lot of my time working on the tag team list is that it, it is that granular right when yeah. you are looking at at like singular match results and and uh, we'll get into it in a moment, but but you know, one match made all the difference for, yeah. for one particular yes. person uh, uh, <laughs> this year. Um, but uh, you know, uh, I'm on the 500 uh, uh, committee, and and I've talked about how choosing this year's number one was as easy as I can yeah. remember. Last year was very difficult with with Seth Rollins. It took us a long time to get there. T- tell me about mm-hmm. this year's number one. You mentioned it, uh, a Tony Storm. What was there? Was it pretty easy to get consensus or, or uh, was there a lot of debate? So I think that one was easier because uh, the criteria, uh, the time frame where it was like, we have to realize like, watch out for the shoe was literally like the beginning <laughs> of the criteria, like yeah. of the, the, the time frame, and to now her being world champion. And I think why I wanted her to be number one more than anything though is that Tony Storm yeah. elevated every woman she worked with during that era. It wasn't just like the Tony Storm show. I think she did a very good job like Mariah May and everyone that she interacted with. I think she also, you know, even with like her interviews, I think she added an element to those as well that just made you want to tune into whatever Tony Storm was doing on screen. Um and I think those are the things that like make 
you a star. And that is why I felt like Tony Storm should have absolutely been number one. Um, I think the top 10 was very hard this year. I did see a lot of um, criticism about the top 10 because you did have a lot of women out there that were killing it. And depending on what promotion that you primarily focused on, you felt like that, you know, this woman should be in the top 10, maybe not this woman. Um, just some, some of the people that we talked about that we were like, where do they fit it? Like Willow Nightingale. You know, she's had a bomb year. Uh, then you have um, like the newer wrestlers. So I always feel like this is their first year. If they're already in the top five or 10, if they eventually win the, ch the, the world title, then it's like, where do they strive to? You know, like, yeah. so it's that weird, like, you know, I know you really like her, but, you know, I know you primarily focus on, you know, the Japanese scene, but, you know, so it's just those like um, little things. But as far as like number one, that was like really easy. It was more getting down into like who's under her because yeah. so and, many women killed it. And, and you know, I, I certainly hear about this on um, the, the 500 side, you, you know, inevitably there are... Um, I don't want to say dismissively, but 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 there are more casual wrestling fans who maybe aren't familiar with the international scene and they go to a list like this, expecting to it, it to be filled with you know WWE yeah. women and on top ten and maybe some some AEW when so when they see uh, some names that maybe they don't um, recognize and again we've dealt with this mm -hmm. on the on the five hundred side. I remember yeah. when we had Okada number one and people were like, "Who's this Okada guy?" Yeah. You know, <laughs> and and uh, um, I, I and more so, I would think, on the women's side, because historically, uh, uh, Japanese wrestling has been ahead of, of American wrestling yeah. in terms of appreciating uh, women, pushing uh, women, really kind of focusing on, on women's wrestling. You know, American uh, wrestling, certainly WWE, only the last, you know, 10, 15 years have they really gotten uh, uh, on board. Um, so, you know, inevitably, you always see uh, uh, Japanese promotions uh, represented pretty well. Uh, in the top 10, even yeah. though I think of, of the top 10, I think there's only two Japanese uh, women in, in the top 10. Um, how about, uh, well, a lot of things I wanted to, to ask you about. Uh, well, let's focus for a moment on, on Tony Storm. Number one, um, what what I think is so interesting uh, about her, and I, and I wrote up her, her bio, is that in a promotion that um, really... Uh, it values itself for being the alternative to WWE and mm -hmm. was kind of founded on the idea that we're not going to be the gimmicky nonsense. We're not sports entertainment. We're pro wrestling. And by and large, you look at the AEW roster, it's, it's just wrestlers with their names, you know, no real gimmicks. Yeah. Uh, Tony Storm is very much like a sports entertainment. I, I mean, it's not just like yeah. WWE 30 years ago, you know, it, it is so over the top. Right. Um, I got to say, I, I haven't always loved it. I, I, I've thought mm. it, 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 uh, at times. I think it works better as a baby face uh, now mm. because I think I can see that. Uh, there's an element to the character that is kind of endearing and it's, yeah. it's easy to like when you have like a permission to yeah. like her where her as, you know, I just don't think it comes off as like dastardly or, or sinister. It's sort of right. goofy. Because it, it yes, over. exactly. Yeah, so inevitably it's sort of likable. <laughs> But, um, you know, give me your thoughts on, on Tony Storm as an act, as, mm -hmm. as a character. And it's interesting that, you know, she's a woman who's been around for a long time yeah. and has been super talented for a long time. Yeah. Um, but it really took, you know, finding yeah. this really over the top character. To, Very to much so. And I appreciate it because it wasn't like anything else. And you could tell that this was not something that could have been assigned to Tony. Like it couldn't have been like someone in the writer's room, like, okay, right. so I got this like old Hollywood golden age movie character for you. And you're going to do this. Like you can tell that it came from like something that Tony Storm wanted to do, something that she was familiar with or an era, I should say that she was familiar with. Um, it was like, I just, you know, I want to play. And I, I have this like feeling to that, the AEW women um, have such a lack of attention put on them that she was given the room to be like, you know what, I'm going to try this tonight. Like, and like, you know what I mean? Like, and then it like worked and they, and I just have this feeling that they were like, okay, just let, you know, let Tony Storm do her thing. And I do agree with you about how, you know, at times it, it was a little bit over the top and um, I, I think it had to be at first um, to like work. 
Um, but it, ah, Mariah made such an important part of that mm -hmm. because you were able to, uh, I don't know how to explain it, but because Tony Storm's part of it was so over the top, and then you have Mariah May just copying everything that she's doing. It kind of made you like, be like, wait, this, you know, this doesn't make sense. And then you're like looking more to Tony. And then when she turned, it was like, okay, yes, now Tony can be, you know, now we can like her and now we can yes. be like, okay, yes, yeah, she's so silly. Like, ha 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 ha. I, I, I just love that promo so much to watch out for the shoot promo because it's like so good and i don't know if it was like like her and renee talked about it prior but like she just sold that so so well and that just like tuned i i was like locked all the way in and then tony storm can wrestle her ass off mm -hmm. so you have always this, has been able to you know right, right. I and and i think right and and she's always been fascinating to me because she's really still very young Mm -hmm. uh, she reminds me a lot of like Rhea Ripley, where it's like, how are you not even 30 yet? And you nope. have like, maybe a Hall of Fame, <laughs> talking about Rhea, but like, how are you this far? And the fact that you still can like wrestle for like 15 more years and still, you know, get better and better and better. And that's how I feel about Tony um, and the things that she's doing in AEW. Um, it's just, it's nice to see. Uh, and then they really got creative with it, with the AMC collaboration mm -hmm. and like having that that's guy be a part yeah. of it. Like, I really feel like that, that was not written by, like, I really think that was like, Tony, like I have a character concept and this is what we're going to yeah, do. You know, I, I'd really like to know that, you know, and, and maybe that's out there and, and, and I'm not aware of it, but, but you're right because it really, the, the whole act is such a departure from the way AEW um, does things. And they're all, you know, no pun intended, but, but, but they've been all in, in terms right. of, right. I mean, using those synergies with AMC and all, all that stuff. So the, the, the act is so kind of like a, a well-crafted, uh, but, but you're right. It does feel like it's something that is coming from, from Tony and, she gets the character uh, more than obviously anybody uh, else can. And, uh, you know, you touched on it, but it, 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 it's, it's really interesting how such a, uh, and, I, and I don't say this uh, uh, flippantly, but, but such a kind of like cartoonish uh, character could um, have been involved in one of the, the, the most compelling storylines of the year. And I think it was because it was sort of light and fun um, you know, the, the, the whole dynamic with Mariah, that when Mariah turned on her, it was like, whoa. I yeah. mean, it, it was um, so heavy, so serious. And and I think it was, you know, I criticize AW as much as next guy for, for being so big into like, they, they go to the, the, the well of blood too much. But if ever there was like uh, an angle where it was really effective, it was Mariah's uh, turn. So um, that was executed to perfection. And, and I think had a big hand in getting Mariah in, in our top 10. Yeah, I agree. Can I also mention one thing about this year's list uh, is there were like a lot of women that jumped really far. Like yeah. Leah Valkyrie, for example, like she was, I think, 190 or something la like the year before. And now she's, I think, 20. Mm -hmm. Like those sorts of jumps are really cool to me because it yeah. means that Y'all were working, <laughs> you you know, y'all were working hard. The visibility is there. Um, you know, you're firing on all cylinders and I like to see that. Um, and it's then I also on the 500, you know, who I think you a hundred something last year and, and this year, number two. Yeah. 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 I mean, that's just like, so, uh, awesome for me. And I love that now women now have a little bit more like playgrounds to like play in. Cause now you have TNA and WWE working a little closer together. So, or even, um, the NXT girls having the opportunities to work with main roster girls. And now you have these high profile matches on your, you know, on your, that we're looking at now. And it's like, you know, in the past it was like, Oh, she, you know, that's just one of the NXT girls, but now it's like, okay, but she took the title off of Becky Lynch, mm -hmm. you know, like, so those sorts of just, uh, I guess the evolution of like what the women have potential to do has, has been really cool. Um, when we were like kind of talking through a lot of these women's career. Um, and I think, I think for the committee, we started with, I think we all tried to do like the top 50 as a group. Um, I think we were like on the call for like maybe four hours and then yeah. we kind of did the rest of the list. Um, 
uh, Kristen and Warren and uh, Kevin, I, I believe, did it uh, via email, and we sort of just kind of looked and and mm -hmm. and moved. And I think that was one of the best ways to do it because the top fifty is probably like the hardest, right? Because you know, you know, one person in the committee thinks that twenty five of those women should be, you know, Joshi wrestlers, and then we're like, but wait, you know, and then also wanting to represent the indie girlies because they have yeah. worked just as hard, have jumped just as many spaces ahead as some of the ones in the main promotions. Uh, so just seeing how everyone is just out here, you know. To yeah, like Kevin deserves a lot of credit, I think, for for um, uh, expanding these uh, committees. I mean, uh, again, I've, I've been doing the 500 now for 17, 18 years. And at, at different times, it was, um, I mean, never unilateral, but there was a you know, maybe fewer people having say, mm -hmm. and now it, it truly is by committee and, and, and beyond just quantity. I think what you're touching on is sort of like uh, a different perspectives, right? Yeah. So, so right. People representing, uh, and, and we're going to get into the conversation later, the, the importance of, of, of different perspectives um, uh, at the table. Uh, but you're right. I mean, you, you got to have people who, who know it, uh, which is why I should not be on that <laughs> committee. <laughs> um, but um, on, on, on the topic of, of sort of who does it uh, well, you know, Tony, uh, uh, number one, and there's some representation, a good deal of, of AW representation, mm -hmm. um, certainly in the top 10. Uh, but it's also been a place where AW has sometimes been criticized um, for, for the handling of women. I, th I think it's interesting that, you know, until now, they still haven't headlined a, a pay-per-view um, with women. They have on the Ring of Honor side, um, mm -hmm. not on the AEW side. Um, I, I thought that they they missed a real opportunity to do that when um, Mercedes uh, debuted at, at Double or Nothing because I don't think they had a super strong main event uh, there. And, uh, you know, you got one of the biggest stars in, in wrestling debuting, mm -hmm. kind of a, a ready-made rivalry right. uh, with Willow, a title match. Um, you know, if you were ever going to do it, I think that's what, what they should have done, and I think they kind of dropped the ball. But overall, what do you think of um, – AW's uh, uh, women's division, how the women are pushed, and and maybe also relative to how WWE does it or, or anywhere anybody else. I always I'm I'm gonna always be that girl that's gonna complain that that you know women could be featured more, or more effort needs to be put there, and attention and all that kind of stuff. But I think AEW just I don't know what it is. You know, it's like you have so and 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 Tony Khan has said like we have you know, the most talented roster. We have the most talented women's roster sometimes. And then it's like, but you don't do anything with them or enough. Like I mentioned before, I feel like Tony Storm's character like got over because it was good. It didn't get over because they were like, we want to push Tony Storm. It was, more, you know, so it's like, what do we need to do to get to that point? It's almost like the women there are like trying, 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 but it's like, the wheel doesn't move. It just keeps spinning and spinning and spinning. And then, like you mentioned, you have someone like Mercedes Monet. I love that Mercedes Monet is always going to, like, uplift whoever she's working with, with, you know, and no matter the circumstance. And when she came in, they had such a good opportunity to, like, present her in that big star-making moment, that star-making match that could have, like, trickled down to the rest of the division. And that just, like, didn't happen. And I get, I think they want to do more of, like, a slow burn with her and, you know, not rush things. But, again, she's Mercedes Monet. You guys could have did whatever you wanted to do with her, and she would have made it work. Um, and, you know, both promotions, I think, could do a lot better uh, with presenting women. I'm never going to be satisfied until, like, the card is, like, 50-50. Um, well, but with... Yeah, I was, uh, was going to say, I mean, I guess, th this is maybe, again, where where... It, it is important um, to have a, a, a people, I think representation might be a, a theme of the show today, mm -hmm. uh, but, and I don't know what it's like in AEW, maybe you have a better idea than I do, or in WWE, but are there women decision makers who are helping call right. the shots, right? I mean, it's like, whether it's agents, producers, I, I, I'm not sure, but, but I think it's so important to have somebody to point out those blind spots, you know? Oh yeah, for sure. And I think that's I think that's one of the things that's missing back there in AEW is more women um that can make decisions like there to advocate for the women and it can't be one of the women's wrestlers. Right. You know, yeah. and that's what it's been in the past and that's really hard to make decisions if it's 
if it's a conflict of interest almost like we need a couple women back there you know diversity is important as well to, to say like okay if we have 17 matches on this pay-per-view card why is there only one women's match you know like those little things and and, the, and ring of honor you know just like i said WWE could point to NXT because they do very well with the women with Ring of Honor. It's the same thing, but you but they don't put the same attention on it. We don't even see the, it on TV or anything. So there's a lot of like missed opportunities there. And I think every each promotion can do better. I think you know, the list expanding to 250 absolutely helps with that because now it's putting, you know, women all over the industry, Indies, you know, Japan, um, internationally, it's putting all of these women in a spot where they can be noticed. And it also pushes you to work hard. If you're like ranked, you're like, oh shit, I'm going to keep doing this. I'm going to yeah. keep doing this. And hopefully, you know, it just keeps evolving and evolving and evolving. Um, but I do hope that at least with AEW, it changes because they have a lot of great talent over there. It's like doing a disservice to the business almost. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, you, 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 you just brought her up and, uh, you know, people uh, uh, were shocked not to see Roman Reigns on our PWI uh, 500. And they might be equally shocked not to see Mercedes uh, Monet on the, the women's 250. And it's for the same reason. Um, yep. And in both cases, they, they miss the, the activity cutoff by one match. So yes. if Roman had one more match and if Mercedes had one more match, not, not oh. only would they be ranked, ranked I imagine they'd be uh, ranked uh, uh, fairly high. And yeah. you know, a little peek behind the curtain, I wrote up Mercedes' uh, entry. We, we were ready to go and, and mm -hmm. we had reason to believe that she would have made um, the, the, she would have met the threshold and she did not. Um, you know, what were your thoughts on that? You know, do you have any any uh, uh, quibbles with with the, um, the the criteria that that, that kept her out? Uh, no, because and this is what happens when you have the power that Mercedes Monet has, because we essentially had two different lists per, or, or um, rankings prepared for if she had that one last mm -hmm. match, because, you know, we met a little bit before the criteria cut off and we were really just like, okay, well, this is the list of Mercedes has one more match. It, hopefully she's booked for more match. And then this is the list if she isn't. And the power, you know, because we just knew that there was going to be so much criticism about how she could how she could possibly not be on the list for her debuting, all that kind of stuff. But you have to have the criteria that we have, where it's gonna it's nearly impossible. You know what I mean? And it's like I even like I don't know if I can say this, but we even were like considering like, do we push up the criteria to like? Yeah, and I was like, you know what? Hell no. <laughs> well, I think there's a debate. You know, in the, the last episode of the, of the podcast, we had this discussion with um, Kristen. And I, and I think there is a debate to be had. I don't know exactly where I land on it, but, you know, touching on something you just brought up, which is the, the relative uh, lack of spots on a card for women. Is it fair, you know, to have the same activity standards mm -hmm. for women when realistically they have a lot less, a uh, lot fewer opportunities yep. to wrestle? Right, right. Exactly. Yeah, so, I mean, it's a it, it's a question, you know. Yeah. Um. But yeah, I mean, it's it's, uh, it's a shame. Like what changes? Like, do the promotions change, or do we? Like, it's like what comes first? You do. I mean, there is something to be said for for, for having, you know. I I I, I think I, I brought this up uh, before with, with the the Olympics. There was that gymnast who, um, won the the, the bronze medal after, oh, yeah. uh, uh, like uh, uh, protesting or something, but she missed the, like the timeline to protest by like a minute or something like that. <sighs> so they stripped her of the bronze medal. On on one hand, it's awful, right? On the other hand, it's like if if you know what's the point of having rules if you don't there has uh, to be to them? Yeah. there has to be yeah it, it sucks it sucks and yeah. I get it and and it killed me not to have Roman Reigns who I think is maybe mm -hmm. the best performer in in all of wrestling not right. not in the five hundred right. um, but I get it you know I, I, I guess it, it is what it is um, as as far as you know one, one I don't know how much I want to give a, a peek behind the curtain uh, about this but do the math somebody is out of the the top ten and um, that means everybody moves up one. Um, and um, Athena uh, uh, makes the top 10 and uh, going through, you know, for, for me, I've got to like dig into all, the, all these women. I'm writing these up and, and what they did throughout the year. 
And I thought like, wow, I mean, she, she really, and, and what's fascinating, you touched on it. It's crazy that, that these are two promotions booked by Tony Khan because he couldn't be more different. I mean, right. Athena, I think is like the, the model on how you, you could build a whole promotion a, around Absolutely. someone. And, um, really you you can argue that that she is carrying ring of honor uh, on her shoulders and again you talk about kind of like the 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 opposite of of a a roman reigns or a mercedes mm -hmm. the workhorse i mean the the, the schedule that that right. she uh, kept even with like a bum leg yes uh, that she did so she's super impressive uh very much glad to see her in in the top 10 maybe even art would argue that she deserves to be higher Yes, <laughs> I absolutely agree. And that's when you get the arguments about the, you know, girls in Japan that I'm not familiar with. And then you start, you know, listen, their accolades and how many matches they wrestled or how long they, you know, what else has been interesting is learning like how many, um, and I don't know if this is like lack of women, like on the indie scene, like there's not enough women for them to wrestle, but there's a lot of like law, like record championships mm -hmm. like where you know no one holds a championship on the indie scene for a little bit like it's either you have it for like 300 days or like and i was like that's so interesting and i just wonder if that's because there's not enough women for them to wrestle or if it's just i guess the model or maybe like the rick flair model where you just travel with them and you just wrestle everyone and maybe you're just champion for a long time um but that was interesting to me because i don't follow a lot i don't follow yeah every single wrestling promotion so it's like oh wow there's a lot of like long time champs <laughs> well you establish a a, a champion right mm -hmm. i mean the the longer the 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 champion has uh the title the more credible they are the better it looks for the promotion so mm -hmm. look ring of honor is not exactly setting the world on fire i think the one thing that they've got going for them is a super strong uh a women's champion uh, yeah. uh more so even i i think very much than than their their men's world uh, champion i mean it really is a promotion where the the biggest star um is um the, the women's champion uh that said you know not a ton of depth in the ring of honor women's division and i think one mm -hmm. in a way it's helped athena because it, yeah. it's meant grabbing people from mm -hmm. a little place from the indies from aw she gets the, a chance um, to work with former AEW uh, uh, women's world champions and beat them, beat women, some of the top women from the Indies. So in, in a roundabout way, maybe uh, it's helped her. Um, let, let me ask you about another name that, that you brought, brought up, maybe the, the biggest women star in, in wrestling, uh, Rhea Ripley. She is three this year? Yeah. Do you have this? So why don't I go uh, real quick through the, the top ten. So so number one, uh, we touched on Tony Stone. Number two, uh, Jordan Grace out of TNA also. Uh, got some exposure uh, on WWE this year. Rhea Ripley is number three. Uh, number four is, I hope I'm pronouncing some of these names <laughs> right, mm -hmm. Micah, uh, out of uh, Stardom. She was a, the big star in Stardom. Uh, five, uh, Stephanie Vaquer, who, who a lot of people got to see uh, in AEW. Yeah. This year, working Mercedes, now signed to uh, WWE. Um, number six, uh, another Japanese star, Sari. I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right, uh, but but uh, a star, uh, kind of the top star out of the the upstart uh, Marigold promotion, which is kind of the rival to um, to Stardom. Um, Bailey at number seven, uh, Willow, who you mentioned at number eight, Mariah May number nine, and uh, as I said, Athena uh, number ten. Uh, um, getting back to, to Rhea, our, our number one last year, I would have thought maybe in the running. For number one this year but didn't have it's, it's the downside of having a strong a year as she did right. last year that it, it's so hard to follow up on and she she uh lost the title yeah. took a few months off with an injury yeah. failed to get the title back when when she got back but you know from a performer uh, standpoint in terms of mm -hmm. like She's only gotten better. I mean, I think the game, <sighs> her, she's just more and more polished. Yeah. You know, I think you could argue, male or female, one of the most polished performers in, in all of wrestling, yeah. you know, gets a ton of TV yeah. time, really helped, but but somebody who she gets, gets it. it, knows the character, uh, uh, work a certain style, it's just kind of like fully formed. Um, Absolutely. And, and, I, and it's funny because I was just talking to Brian H. Waters because uh, maybe three or four years ago, like I had written Ray Ripley off. Like I was like, when she had lost to Charlotte 
Oh, I and agree. I just, yeah, I, I just for a never, while I was, like, hey, I, I was right. so yeah. yeah, I was so dis. I was just like, she had so much momentum. Like this killed her, and I, I didn't. I, I just no, it just wasn't working for me. And I am the biggest, you know, Daniel Bryan fickle, fickle, fickle. I'm the biggest hypocrite because now I am like she is, like you said, everything you said, one of the best performers, and she's still the number one WWE women woman that we ranked on the um on the committee but she's only gonna get better and better and better and better and better and she hit that sweet spot of the heel but we just love you so much that it's yeah. like do, you do whatever you want <laughs> right yeah. we love you <laughs> yeah i think you know similar to to uh, and i think you touched on it uh, uh, similar to roman reigns where for for so long you know R roman reigns is the same person now that he was years ago in terms right. of like, I mean, he's gotten better, but uh, it, it is about finding yourself, finding the uh, the character because when Roman was getting pushed as a baby face all those years, it was terrible. It, it was such oh, a, a, an awful act. It wasn't working. Um, and then you compare that to, to this guy that we've had for the last few years, who is again, maybe the best performer in, in the business sort of fully realized like it and it's him. And I think it sort of happened with Rhea too, that, and you hear this all the time. You hear it from from this guy, uh, a Stone Cold. It's like when when you you tap into yourself and you find yourself in that character is when you really hit your stride. Yeah. And and I think that's what we're seeing um, out of her. And and uh, you know she talked about that at WrestleMania, having her band per perform her music and how much that meant to her. Um, I, I I think breaking away from Judgment Day. It's as much as being in Judgment Day and and essentially leading Judgment Day really catapulted her. I think it was also good to to get away. Um, I also get taking the belt off for her and mm -hmm. um, letting other other women grow. I think it's been good for Liv Morgan um, and, and some of these other women. And uh, yeah, what is she, 24, 25? It's, it's crazy. crazy. Yeah, yeah, I know, it's insane. Yeah, and, and you're absolutely right. She's, she's already got a Hall of Fame career. Yeah. It's wild. Yeah, yeah, I'm really proud of her. Um, another woman uh, uh, from WWE on, on the list would be Curious on your take, uh, uh, Bailey. An interesting year, right? Because mm -hmm. on paper, right, like so much went right for her this year. Wins the the, the Royal Rumble, wins the, the world title at WrestleMania in, in a show stealing match, one of the best mm -hmm. matches, if not the best match uh, of the weekend. You know, again, kind of like everything banging on all cylinders. And yet it's just all year long, it, it, it feels like there's kind of a disconnect, right? Like mm -hmm. um, the, the, the fans weren't, totally there for the ride um yeah. when she lost it it was kind of a blip i don't you know uh and and kind of relating to to what i just said about roman reigns when when roman was miscast as a baby face for a long time i think you could sort of like see it on him i remember yeah. seeing him come to the ring and and he just looked like a guy who hated coming to work every day <laughs> you know? and and not to to make too much of it but but I've noticed something in Bailey throughout the year that there's just something about her feels like not that she's not having fun necessarily, but but mm. she's um, a little unfulfilled. So something's missing. Mm. I, I I I have to agree with you there. There is so so Bailey is always an interesting case to me because she is. She's never the bell of the ball. Like even if she's having the most greatest year ever, it's compared to Sasha Banks or it's compared to someone else. Or you have a mega star like Ray Ripley, where it's like no matter what she does, she's gonna get overshadowed by that. Um, and I think with Bailey, it's always kind of the same thing. And when you're saying like on paper she had a great year, and I think Kristen might have even said that verbatim mm -hmm. while we were discussing the committee in the committee meeting because she it is Roy Rumble winner. I think almost every woman that won the Roy Rumble maybe ended up like in the top three of the PWI list just because it just makes sense. You when you go to wrestle, you have a championship match at WrestleMania, mm -hmm. but with Bailey. It's something about it, and my, I might you, I'm the biggest Bailey fan. It's something that it's just it's it never like really gets to that point. Like even when she was champion, it, it just felt like nothing that she was doing. Not that I wasn't invested and tuned in, felt 
uh, like obvious main event, like things that Ray Ripley was doing, it's like electric, like it's like hot fire. But the things that Bailey was doing, it was great, but it didn't have that like yeah. that shine to it. And I don't know what it is. And I don't know if it's like it's almost like the natty thing where it's like they're almost too good, where it's like uh, it's like when you have like two kids and like one is needy, but like one is like really good and uh, independent. And so you kind of like, oh, oh, you're fine. Me, you're fine. <laughs> but like, let me focus on this one. But it's like, but wait, like, I'm really good. Too. Like, I don't know. Yeah. It, it just I always felt that way. But I do on a whole nother note, feel like Bailey is finding herself as far as like, um, the way she dresses and I feel like she's more comfortable in her own skin now, like the way she's dressing, her makeup, her hair. Um, I think she's being more herself, but when it comes to like, I, I still think, I still think we haven't had Bailey's best year yet. I, you yeah, know, I agree. And and she's had some, some great ones. I mean, some of it might be um, the booking in that, you know, and I think this is always a, a problem with um, um, babyface turns mm -hmm. is, especially when they're done this way, when, you know, Bailey never had that like epiphany of like, I want to do right. I've been doing wrong and, and I want to do right. It was just that like her her scumbag friends turned on her. And so it's like, oh, well, I guess, mm -hmm. I guess I'm a babyface <laughs> now because my, my heel friends healed on me, you know. So, um, you know, we never had that redemption you know for her it was just sort of like overnight i i guess she's a a, a baby face um and it, it 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 also may be a product of a pretty deep women's uh, a division between the, the two brands with a lot of star power in wwe that yeah it, it, it can kind of be hard to um to, to break out she also um over the last couple of years missed a lot of time uh not recently not during this evaluation but but i think still kind of playing catch up in that yep. in the time she was gone. So many people were elevated, including uh, Rhea, that, that now it's sort of like, you know, don't forget about me. I'm, mm -hmm. I'm here too. Yeah, but it's like, because she's already over, you kind of feel like you don't need to pour into her, but then it's like, yeah. you know, it's, she's it's in like that right now. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So. Anyhow, uh, a super exciting list. I'd, I'd love to go through through all 250. We, we won't do that. Uh, head on over to, to pwi-online.com. And uh, check it out. What, one last thing uh, on the list, because we talk, we always kind of go into this. Uh, you have any thoughts on the the age old debate of whether there should be a women's two hundred and fifty, whether mm. it should, uh, whether they all belong on, you know, whether the, there should be a PWA five hundred that is both men uh, and women, um, but inevitably that means a lot of people being left off. Yeah. I think for now it's important. I think for now it's important for these women to stand alone because like you said, if, if we combine the list and it's like all the amazing women that I just learned about will probably will never be ranked. Right. So I think for now, yes. Um, and I don't know how I feel about that because I, I just finally finished Becky Lynch's book and she didn't like the concept of evolution pay-per-view. She felt like it was actually like more harming than good. She said, you know, she basically we should be good enough to have like to be the biggest thing on any pay-per-view. Like we shouldn't just have it separated. And you would be shocked that you would think every, all the women in WWE would be like, yeah, evolution. So then that made me kind of think about it. And I was like, yeah, that obviously that's ideal, but there is a reason why we need to do this right now. Yeah. So. There's a reality that you're not there yet. Right. right. So, yeah. so when, until then there's not parody and, and, right maybe this helps you get to parity, you know? Exactly. Um, and uh, yeah, I mean, when we started it, I forget how long it was, 2008 or so, maybe it's one of that, uh, when, when we did the first and it was the female 50, and even mm -hmm. to get to 50, it was like, you know, and a lot of times like relatively uh, obscure as far as like mainstream uh, 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 recognition, mm -hmm. women were, were, were ranking um, number one. So we certainly, come a long way from 50 to 250 I mean, right. five times over um and you can i'm sure you can make a case for a, a 500 uh, uh right i mean as hard as that was yes <laughs> yeah. I'll, I'll do I'll, I'll have some more spots just to make it easier for us <laughs> yeah yeah um so again go check out the issue pwa-online.com there's a couple of the topics i want to talk to you about one of them we're both eager to, to touch on big uh, uh, news about women in wrestling um, just breaking over the last 24 hours or so, but not women wrestlers. 
Um, and that was the the uh, uh, my jaw dropped when I read it. The, the announcement of, of Samantha Irving leaving yeah. WWE. I, I've made it clear here. I'm a huge, huge fan. Um, I saw that and it, it really surprised me. I think uh, a huge loss for, for, for WWE. You know, I, I, I think they kind of eased uh, uh, of the blow with, with the news of, uh, of Lillian Garcia returning, you know, and I think for so long, the, the thought was that this was kind of the heir to, to Lillian's yeah. uh, throne. So if, if you can't have the, the, the new, you know, queen of, of, uh, of a ring announcing, bring back the original, it's a good kind of consolation prize for for wwe um but man i don't know i mean i i, I can't know what what's in her mind and what's behind the the, oh. the decisions what what a couple things so uh and and I'll, I'll give to you in a second but i do have a lot to say about this mm -hmm. if, if in as much as um if this is motivated by um not professional success but 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 personal happiness or or what have you then i'm all about it great you know like that that's got to come first we know that that ricochet left wwe is over on, on aw i imagine i got to talk to ricochet a few weeks ago and we talked about this and and it's just the reality that that um a relationship is is going to be strained when when two people are are working uh, far apart for, for competitors uh essentially so um at, it, it, it is, if that had something to do with it, um, then I certainly understand. Looking at it completely sort of like cynically and professionally, um, I think, and I've said, uh, Samantha was on her way to being one of the all-time greats, if not the, I mean, up there with with Howard Finkel. I think you can make the argument that that she already surpassed uh, Lillian. Maybe maybe not in terms of longevity, because Lillian did, did it for a lot longer, but in terms of, of, uh, of a style, and, and creating something where where it was really unique. I mean, kind of like Michael Buffer, like yeah. I think she was already there. And that job is such a unique job, you know, wrestling ring announcer that um, there's not that many spots for it. And and right. she was at the top. I mean, she, she was the top ring announcer right in the top wrestling promotion in the world, doing it in, you know, center stage at WrestleMania, calling the biggest matches uh, in the world, huge social media. So from a professional standpoint, I'm like, what are you doing? So <laughs> like, why would you leave? <laughs> so I, I get that she might have other aspirations. I know that right. she sings. So we, we can't know what's in her head. Right. Um, in, in terms of the trajectory that, that again, I think she was on her way to being potentially the greatest. It is disheartening her to, to, to see her leave. Uh, sure, she could show up and do this on AEW um, tomorrow. I, I think if we're being, you know, honest, it's not the same. It's not the same yeah. audience. She, you know, you're, you're not going to perform in in front of uh, as big crowds. And um, you know, do, do you get there in five years and ten years? Does AEW really give WWE a run for her money? Who knows? She was at the the pinnacle, so it's it's difficult. And another thing I just thought of when I I heard the news was, well, does she maybe want to go do something like? Uh, a UFC or something. Then I think, well, no, because if she wanted to do UFC, she should stay in the in the house too. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, and I wonder if that was an, an opportunity. So I don't know what, what what to make of it. What what do you make of it? I was I'm still heartbroken because I just enjoyed her work so much. She was paving her own lane, like everything that you mentioned. Um, and Buffer actually tweeted her earlier this year, giving her her props and being super impressed with her work. So she was there, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And you can even say like, I love Lillian Garcia. I do. Um, but rough start last night, I'm uh, sorry, a rough start for her, uh, uh last night. If, if you saw right out of the gate, kind of, tripping I, know, up. Yeah. I know. And it's so unfortunate because even Lillian being the veteran that she is in the company, like, you're now filling bigger shoes, I mm -hmm. think, than she than you ever, yeah. you know, ever did. And she was like the modern, like Samantha Urban was like the modern. Like, when have they ever put the camera on the reaction of a ring announcer? She was getting over so huge on social media. You I mean, know, that, that was it. She really, it, she 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 became a thing, right? She really Which did. Um, oh, I don't know when. I think more than Lillian, and maybe even more than than Howard Finkel in this day. Oh, a thousand percent. 
you know yeah yeah and then and, and that's why i like, i think like she was the, the modern era goat because she is she capitalized in this new world of wrestling fandom and i remember um i always use my dad as a barometer because he's you know, he only watches the weekly shows. Like he doesn't watch NXT. He's not on social media. He's only watched the weekly WWE shows for the last 30 years. So I love hearing his perspective on things because you're literally a casual fan. Like, you know, you're not a, you know, crazy on the IWC. And he was a huge fan. Like he, first he was just like, um, that girl, you know, he was just like, wow, her voice is, you know, amazing. And he didn't even know what he looked like for a while. And I was like, that's how you know you're not on social media. Um, yeah. But the fact that he was so impressed with her work and not even seeing her on social media was like wow like that's how impressive you know it was and i think the the part too um is that she was a fan like us mm -hmm. like her crying her like, yeah yeah emotional. you know she I was mean, us like i'm getting goosebumps just, yeah. just thinking about when she announced like cody rhodes being the new champion like she was us but at the same time we were entertained and inspired by her and she also elevated the wrestlers that she announced and that's who who can say that like chelsea green like who can say that their dream like was this woman of color right. to announce you at wrestlemania like chelsea green is saying that that was one of her wrestlemania dreams like come on and she hasn't been she's only was in, in the company for three years it's incredible yeah it's it's like how you hear a lot of wrestlers say that they want their match called by jim ross or a particular right. wrestler yeah, it, that had become a thing where where, where um, wrestlers wanted Samantha call uh, announcing their their matches because she was so great at it. The, the one thing that I wonder is, um, did they lowball her? You know, because mm, I, I, at the end of the day, I, I imagine in in the, uh, the 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 salary structure, um, ring announcer has has never been that high a position in right. in WWE. You know, is it possible that they didn't know what they had? They didn't recognize that. Look, I don't, I don't know what you pay ring announcers here, but but Samantha deserves a lot more than that. Mm -hmm. um, Rick Shea was on social media uh, apparently saying that she's not coming over to AEW. Take that for for what it's worth. If she was, that's exactly what he would say. Right. Um, so um, you know, I'm sure Tony Khan's got some deep pockets, and and if they wanted her, they yeah. could make it worth her yeah. while. But, but it's sadly, I can see that being a part of the reason, especially because it was so abrupt. Because I'm sure in her mind, like where her contract negotiations coming up, she had a number in mind, and just like, of course, they're gonna match that. Like, look how much of what I've done, all the contributions I've made, of course. And they probably lowballed her as a ring announcer, as a woman, as a woman of color. And you know, my my man already isn't here, <laughs> and yeah. he's working for and someone with a blank yeah. checkbook. I might just leave. And I wonder if part of, a, and this is all speculation completely, but yeah. but we we know there have been conversations with Lillian because Lillian was was on Raw some weeks ago, kind of passing the torch to mm -hmm. to Samantha. So did they have um, a, a, a reason to believe that we could get Lillian back? And and in their mind, they're thinking, wow, you know, the Attitude Era announcer, all this stuff, and we can get Lenny, Lillian for for this price. Uh, who needs Samantha? And if they think that, I mean, it's just insane. I mean, really, Very you know, WWE has got great wrestlers, great uh, uh, performers, all that stuff. But but how many people uh, employed by uh, WWE or AEW or, or any company can you say that you may have the greatest of all time in, in, right. uh, potentially uh, in, in this person? And, and, you know, it might sound like hyperbole, but, but if, if she's not now, she could have become that, you know, she yeah. was certainly on her way to becoming that. Mm -hmm. um, and it's, a, it, and it elevates everything. I mean, th there is a WrestleMania main event, which is the biggest match of the year in wrestling. Mm -hmm. uh, but it, again, in, in UFC, it's the difference uh, between Michael Buffer, uh, or, or, or which is the one they have, Bruce Bu Bruce Buffer is the one they have, uh, Bruce calling uh, a match or somebody else uh, uh, making announcements. You know, when when Bruce Buffer does the the uh, uh, the introductions for the main event of a mm -hmm. UFC show, it feels extra special. If he's not there, it it makes a difference. It's, it's different, right? It's the same with Samantha. So a, a huge huge loss for for WWE. Um, a, Another topic, a kind of similar talk that I wanted to touch uh, on, and, and it's something I want to talk to uh, uh, talk about for a while, is mm -hmm. this issue of, of representation, in particular, uh, of black representation in WWE, because yeah. this has come up. Uh, Triple H was asked about it at the uh, 
the scrum at uh, uh, Bad Blood. And uh, I think Gabe, not the greatest answer in in the world. It is the answer that, that you hear out of a lot of, you know, uh, yeah. executives as, as a way to sort of excuse uh, a lack of representation, which is like, oh, we don't see color. We, we, we just hire the best, push the best. Um, but it is, and, and I want to be careful here. I, I you know, like I, I, I don't want to like uh, dump on them too much and, and accuse them of, of anything. But, but mm -hmm. I think the fact that um, even relative to the last five years, ten years, mm -hmm. uh, there, there is a, a, a clear dearth and absence of, uh, and, and it's not necessarily minority wrestlers, people of color, but but specifically black wrestlers, yeah, uh, in in prime positions mm -hmm. in. in in WWE, and and you know not only are, are they not in in the main event mix, it's just not a lot of them, right? I mean, I even think like, well, who could you elevate? And and it's like hey, there's there's like almost nobody here. Yeah, you can get a, a a Carmelo, uh, uh, something like that. But 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 there's just not a lot. So, um, is this a problem? How big a problem is it? And and what should WWE do about it? This is such like a loaded topic. Um, <laughs> one, I, I, I'll go back to Triple H's answer. And I was very disappointed in that answer because you can't say that, but then also host a PLE in a town, a city that is known for being majority black, yeah. leaning into that, having two black women as the host, Metro hip hop culture, you can't lean into that to make this PLE cool. And then in that same press conference, say you don't see color. It just, it just doesn't compute, you know, or brag that Kofi was the first, you know, black champion in one hand, but, but you don't see color though. So it's like, Oh, it's like one of those things. Um, I don't think, you know, he's, I, I think the, the accusations of him being racist are ridiculous. I don't think that he's racist. I think, um, they do need to do a better job of nurturing the black talent. I think a lot of the black talent in the last, let's say like, you know, five years have almost like gotten themselves over. And then they kind of, you know, go from there and just try to fight for whatever opportunity they can get. And that's not how it should be. I go back to NXT. I think NXT does a really good job of. Yeah, it's, it's of, incredible. Like you know, the, the, the contrast. I mean, it, yeah. this is much less a problem in, in NXT, which tells you that you have the pipeline, right? Exactly. I mean, the, the talent uh, exists. It's just about, you know, bring them up. Right, exactly. And I think another uh, thing, too, is like, stop putting black characters on the black wrestlers, you know, like. They don't need to be a stereotype. Like, also, we don't something. have to, you know. Yeah, yeah I, I totally agree. I'm sorry to interrupt you, but but this mm -hmm. is something they do with, with with all ethnicities, and and not just like a stereotype. For some reason, you know, it's like you know, uh, 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 1998 again with like the <laughs> different factions. The black wrestlers all have to be together. The Japanese yeah. wrestlers have to all be together. The Hispanic wrestlers. All have to be together. I, I, you know, and they they put them in yeah. little groups. And I don't know why that is. Uh, yeah, I don't, I, I don't get that at all. And I think uh, they they really lost a lot with Bobby Lashley. Yeah. Because they did push him, and I think he was a great champion. I think he was uh, a dominant champion from what I remember. He defended it. Um, but losing him and not pushing that, I think not capitalizing on the hurt business really hurt yep. them a lot as well, huge. because yep. that was such a huge faction and it was during the pandemic and they got over crazy, they like, yep. you know, and it's like, once they got on TV, that's when they started kind of working with them and you can't help but think like, you know, and then MVP was like, we never was it a, a valid faction on TV in front of, uh, I shouldn't say that, in front of a live crowd. And I was just like, wait, what? Like, how, how do you not cap, you know, how do you not capitalize? I think there's a lot of work that be, could be done. And there is also a part of me, and I know this might sound crazy, but I also don't want there to be a thing where let's push black wrestlers just for the sake of it. Because I at think the same really time, yeah. you know what I mean? Because it's like wrestling is, is one of those like precarious businesses where you do have to have an it factor to a certain extent. And there are black wrestlers who have had it that you guys fumbled. Yes. But then also don't just throw us in there to appease us. And it's just like, the storyline doesn't make sense. Or this seems a little pseudo racist. You know what I mean? Yeah. So it's, oh, it's, it's that like, 
and I worry that that's what's what's going to come of of this whole uh, debate is mm -hmm. that now they kind of get in in reaction mode, and it's like, who's black? You right, right. <laughs> and I feel like that's world title way on you. worse. I think <laughs> yeah, and, that and, is way and, worse. And Omos is our world champion. <laughs> Uh, exactly. Like that. And, and also, and where's he? On Amas, who, who I think is, is is fine, and I wouldn't mind seeing Amas get get a push. But right, it, it can't be that way. And and in in some ways, I, I I think like having Lashley around for so long, um, it it was kind of like a mixed blessing because I think they they didn't pay as much attention to this because it was right. like. Oh, we're, we're fine with representation. We've got Lashley. And, and well, that black guy was just champion. Yeah, <laughs> it's and, fine, he, it's right. fine. and he was like always in the main event mix. So, so we're fine. <laughs> Meanwhile, they they really weren't doing the work to have that that next uh, black star uh, in the pipeline. And th there are candidates. You know, th there are folks. Th the one that that comes to mind, and I'd I'd be interested in your take. And I feel like you know this guy's been talked about for forever is a, a Montez Ford, right? I mean, like yes. a, a guy who like checks all the boxes. Um, yeah. uh, last year, they, they, they kind of teased uh, a singles run mm -hmm. and put him in the elimination chamber and then just kind of abandoned the whole thing and, and yeah. put him back in, in the Street Profits, which I get that like, you know, you don't want to make Angelo the the the, the Marty Janetti of yeah. um, the, the, the team, um, but it doesn't need to, to be that way. They, they, right. they could both bring a lot to the table. Right as um as single stars and you don't even need to disband the the, the street profits look Agreed. what they did with the usos um mm -hmm. and, and how over uh jay has gone so they could stay you know kofi won won the world title being part of of uh, a new day so um you could elevate montez without breaking up streets profits but also really what are the street profits right now what is tag team wrestling and in, in WWE right now it's not a thing and and like when you got a guy like like montez ford who's who's got such an upside you're really doing a disservice, you know, mm -hmm. having them in in a role that is is too limiting for for him. Yeah, and I, and I hate to say this because I love him and the Street Profits, but it's getting stale. It's been stale, yeah. You know, it, yeah, it, it is, and you know, I love Brandy, but it's just it's just not it's just not working for me. And what's gonna happen is, is it's like moments and moments, and then they're just gonna plateau. And then when they do try to push Montez, it's gonna be like womp womp. And that's so unfortunate because he's such a a great talent. I was just actually talking about Montez because I'm just like, what is it gonna take for them to take him seriously? Because you could tell anytime he gets into that ring, he's ready. He yeah. is all the way ready. Um, I don't think he can be a heel though. Uh, no, I think he's now. too yeah. likable. Like he's just too likable. I hate to say he's too handsome. Like we yeah. know that you're like this lovable goofball. Like we know that. Like that's who you are as a person. Like you would have to like slap Bianca or something. I'm just joking. <laughs> For, I'm just thinking of something that would really make us boo Montez Ford. Like yeah. they, the fifth anniversary of him kissing that baby in the crowd just went viral recently, and I was just like, I would never boo this man. So yeah. it, it's they need to put that battery pack behind him and have it be the same dynamic as the new day have Dawkins come back come out with, if he wins the world title crying like I love I'm sorry just thinking about Kofi Mania it's the fact oh, that great. Big yeah. E and Xavier Woods are more emotional than Kofi and I was just like oh my god that, that just <laughs> made it so that. much more beautiful and it's like why not have that you know, and then it's a change of pace too so I do hope they do more with him He's and he's gotten like he's done everything right He's gotten in shape. He knows how to be a sports entertainer. You know, he is a veteran at this. Like, they need to definitely capitalize on him before it's too late. Yeah, he's not getting any younger. Yeah. Uh, uh, another one I mentioned, uh, Carmelo. I mean, all this talk could be really good for him, right? Because yeah. he, he's a guy who is still young. He's new in the roster. Has has been a top guy in on a brand, right? And carried mm -hmm. himself uh, really well. Yeah. Uh, another really good looking guy checks off uh, all the boxes. So uh, I, I, you know, I bet he's in the back and he sees somebody asking Triple H that that question and, yeah. and he likes stuff like this. Is, yeah, yeah. This is I'm, ready. I'm ready. I'm ready. <laughs> and I, I would have gotten there anyway. I mean, I, yeah. uh, uh, you know, like a, a five year plan. And people have said that about him for, for years. This is a future WrestleMania main eventer, but maybe this expedites all of it, right? Yep. Because there's a realization that like, all right, we, we, we need to do something here. Yeah. Um, and and I, I hope that that's something. Uh, anybody else come to mind? Tr Trick Williams, um, you know, the downside of, of of overreacting, putting him on the top, in, in the main roster, uh, 
and and pushing him is that it, it's potential. Some of these guys aren't quite ready, and and Trick is Trick's really good, but yeah. but Trick still needs a little a, a little work. He still needs a little polish. He's a bit and, on the greener side. Yeah, yeah, and and um, <laughs> you don't want to leave NXT without you know their top star either. So, right. but but options yeah. um, are there, and and touching on something that that we talked about. Um, before this is again where I, I I think it's important to have, you know, representation uh, uh, isn't just about sort of like who's on TV, but but who are making those decisions. And I I bet if there was um, a, a person of color, a, a, a black wrestler, a black veteran um, who mm -hmm. had a seat at the table, um, they would have caught this uh, before yep. it became a thing. You know, uh, absolutely. And, and, you know, so so that's something that then maybe I don't know. You know, is it Booker T? Is it is it some kind of veteran right. who who um, again won't won't have that blind spot? Right. It's something um, that they should be uh, mindful of. Right. Um, I do. I have a. I do know that this WrestleMania card is going to be very diverse. I bet <laughs> after all yeah. of those conversations. Well, that's you know, going it, on. Well, well, again, and, and it's why I'm I'm certainly like not going to accuse anybody of like overt racism or anything like that because i think in other ways they've done really good with hispanic wrestlers i i think like they've done a really good job o over the last few years between dominic mysterio ray mysterio damian priest the world champion you know th th they've done a good job of, of featuring uh, a, a lot of hispanic stars um i i think one difference is uh and this is kind of looking at it very cynically is that there is a a financial incentive for WWE to cater to uh, uh, Latin audiences because it's a whole geographic market that they could tap into, right? right. So we, we create, you know, a, a a big Puerto Rican star in in uh, Damon Priest, and we go down to Puerto Rico and we sell mm -hmm. a bunch of tickets, and and or or you know, a Latin American star, and then and then you've got you know TV rights deals in, in Latin America. It's why they put the world title on, on Jinder Mahal years ago, you know, again, very cynically when they were trying to break into the uh, uh, the Southeast Asian uh, market in, in India. And I and maybe they're less incentivized with the black wrestlers because it's not like there's I mean, I, I think it's interesting when you touched on the like, same like market. market. We got like, this market already. Yeah. Yeah. But it's like, yeah, it's the USA. So uh, but, you know, representation is is about your organization and this goes for for all lines of, of work and industries mm -hmm. your representation looking like your 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 customer base right and right. and um i do think and wwe in a lot of ways has it, it's not a a white roster you know it's not a, you look right. at, at WWE and it's not that it's a bunch of white guys it's not there there is diversity but but right now mm -hmm. there is blind spot where, where there's not um a, a lot yep. of black representation um uh what else so we've already gone for a while i don't want to take too much more of your time uh, uh but want to hit on a couple other big current event stuff mm -hmm. uh, uh you mentioned brian danielson uh, a fan he lost the title and not retired but i guess uh uh you know I no guess. longer full time uh yeah. that was all really crazy and, and weird and unexpected and yeah. kind of anticlimactic i mean to very and and, and <laughs> swerve had like you know was was really building building momentum was was doing right. well as, as a champion i was uneasy about taking the title off of swerve but i thought well wembley stadium brian danielson you know, there's a project that they've been you know working on for a long time it, it made sense and now Brian goes on this year long reign. I'm like, nope. <laughs> like, you know, I really saw that said. happening. Um, and he was one of like my absolute favorites, uh, at one point. And, um, I, 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 I feel like he overexposed himself in AEW. I think it kind of took for me, my opinion, uh, I think it kind of like took something away from him because then he like got super injury prone and it was just like, dude, like, why are you injured? Like, why are you getting injured in these like, in the, in the bigger picture feels like these like random ass matches, like, you know? Um, so I was always for the uh, end it while it's still good like end it while it's still you know and like you said like it was such an anticlimactic like imagine that was brian danielson's retirement match like that's kind of like 
lame compared to like the career that he's had, the highs that he's had. Yeah. And then for that to be, yeah, you know, super interesting. Yeah. And so I, you know, all, all in all, I've just been really disappointed in like the last quarter of of Daniel, Brian Danielson's career, I guess you could say. And, you know, and, and I'll admit that could be part that I'm not emotionally invested in AEW, of course, that has a lot to do with it as well. But um, I do feel like if you're going to do a Brian Danielson retirement match or a retirement tour uh, sort of vibe, I think it could have been done so much better just because he's one of the best wrestlers to ever wrestle like on this planet like and he probably won't ever stop wrestling yeah. so if you're gonna you know play out his retirement i just think it just could have been done so much better yeah yeah are you no. feeling uh, uh john moxley in, in this role uh of you know interesting that they go back to him kind of like a a proven uh, a commodity Ooh. for them so you know what you have with him i mean now it's kind of a new okay. heel role i don't love it you know, uh, yeah. thing. You know, if I see another plastic bag over a wrestler's head, you know? uh, and uh, and you can you believe that you just said that? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> like, can you believe that we've seen that more than one freaking time? We've seen it more, somewhere? you than know, once in the last few months. Yeah. Right. Like, so we've seen an attempted murder in wrestling <laughs> more than one yeah. time to the point where we're tired of seeing it. Like, that just doesn't compute. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I don't like it. Uh, I'm not feeling it. I, I don't love. You know, I, I have a lot of respect for John Moxley, and I think what what he is going for, what he's doing, he's doing well. Mm -hmm. Um, I, I just, I don't know. I'm it's not feeling it's it. It's this thing. It's just you can't do it so much. Like, you know, like professional wrestling is a certain type of like business, and you can't like it's. I don't know. Like, I'm I'm in that like Bret Hart mentality of like psycho. Like, we can't think that someone can actually actually be like i don't know it's just it's yeah. it's too far too often mm -hmm. yeah and, yeah know, and aw so. gets um you know they, they already have not the greatest reputation for for stuff right. like that and then that that show where they had um it was the, the one before this right where where they had the the bag over danielson's head at, at the main event and then earlier in the night a syringe in in swerve's mouth it's just what it's a lot yeah. it's a lot yeah. and i get yeah. it you're like literally like what hasn't been done in this know, but that's not 200 the, uh, years of wrestling i get that part of it yeah. too but then it's like come on but the things that have been done have been done for a reason because they work right exactly. you know? and i'm all for innovating um right. but but, it, but you don't do something different for the sake of it being different um uh kind of jumping back and forth but but kind of on on uh, the subject of, of something that it's kind of uh, uh, time proven and works well. Uh, the, the 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 two bloodline uh, factions in WWE oh, yes. uh, really ramping up now. You know, clearly headed to to war games, which we've known for for months and months. Um, but uh, I I like the slow burn. I I, I like uh, you know w telling a different chapter every week. Jimmy coming yeah. back one week. Jay refusing to join. Now Jay losing the title uh, uh, because of bloodline interference. You know, I'm sure the next step is is Jay falling in line, him coming back, mm -hmm. um, and then there's going to be all the intrigue about the the fourth guy, who who I hope is Sammy Sammy Zayn. I mean, I think like oh. that, that would would um, would pop people uh, the big. I know people have talked about Hikule or something like that. I don't think. I mean. I think the fun thing is getting the band back together. Yeah, together yeah. And, it got to uh, be someone we know that we care about, and at yeah, least and again, giving days. like fans that 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 permission structure to cheer them, right? So yes. now, like the the bloodline that we all kind of loved anyway, but now as as good guys, but keeping that same dynamic, right. where Romans kind of annoyed by Sammy's uh, antics yeah. and Sammy's sort of comic relief and, and, and dancing and getting along with Jay. I, I'm at, you know, that whole act, but as a, a, a baby so face, um, e even if I, I wouldn't keep it going forever, but a, but a one-off, yeah. you know, war games, man, that's, that's just money. That's, that's yeah. Just, yeah. You got me very excited <laughs> about that. <laughs> yeah. What do you think of, of the job that, um, uh, 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 the, the the rogue bloodline uh, mm -hmm. is in solo uh, in them kind of mixed reviews. Yeah. Um, but but it's kind of the point is that you're yeah. I, I guess you're supposed to not like them. Right. 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 Yeah. I see. I am one of those people that and I I mean I, and now that I think about it, I think this is just what I like. I and I know this can't go on forever, but I like when like certain wrestlers are not like 
known to talk. Like I miss when Solo didn't say anything. Yeah, right. <laughs> like, I, you know, I, I just, I felt like that was more who he, like, I guess what his role was in the bloodline. Uh, he is getting better. Like he's selling me more because now he, I think they're going into more like the disgruntled, you know, like, oh, like, you guys can't get this right kind of uh, shtick for him, which is, uh, which is funny, but it's not giving tribal chief. Like I, I don't like Roman not feeling powerful. Like I don't like him asking if Jimmy made the call. Like, Two years ago, is Roman asking somebody else if they made the call? Like, you know what? I, I don't know. Like, I miss when, like, he was just, like, all powerful. And I, and I get that that's, that's how I'm supposed to feel. Right. And, I mean, I, I think you're telling me it means it's you know, working. <laughs> I know. And I'm yeah. just like, no. And I wasn't as familiar with, um, like, Jacob Fatu and um, the other two. Um, the Tanya, Tama Tanya, Tanya. Yes. Right. Like, I, like, I know a lot of people that have followed their careers and was just waiting for them to come. I didn't really know anything about them. So, for me, they are always going to look like a fake bloodline to me. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I'm like, okay, like, where's Roman? Where's Jay? Where's Jimmy? But I think they've done a very good job with that slow burn because at the same time, look at the, the things that Jay's been able to do in the meantime. Yeah. Look at the, you know, even Jimmy, I think, is now more finding like his footing. And I hope that he's able to have a similar um, run where he has his own identity because Jay was able to do everything that he did as IC champion without a bloodline story right. attached to it, which I think was great. But you're always a part of the bloodline. So you can always yeah. like just like they're doing, they could always go back to it. Um, yeah. So I, I think they're doing this very well. Like, and to think that this whole thing started like years and years and years ago, and I'm not tired of it. I'm not criticizing know, WWE. Yeah. It, they have done so, so, so well with that. Um, I really hope that War Games ends up how you said, because I think that would just be like so awesome. And, and if they do want to debut another family member, let it be like maybe after the match or interfering in the yeah. match. But um, I do think bringing Sammy back will be cool. Um, I need Roman to get back on, like, get powerful again like what's going on here but it's yeah. all in all i think is 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 done very well also i don't know if roman is just a really good actor but the way the lay always seems to fall it's not a lay it's it's it yeah, has a uh, has a proper uh, name uh, i don't want to well, well, we'll i think it's yes <laughs> do you notice how every time he puts it back on like it just manages to fall like he yeah. it never like when he got low blow like it just slowly just fell i was like is that, that just like the wrestling gods or something <laughs> it's just so well done I, I think it is being planned out. You know, that was one of the the interesting thing. I, mean, I don't know if you saw the WrestleMania documentary that that they mm -hmm. did on, the, and and you you see, um, you know, th they were going over their entrances and to like, you know, when you get to this step in the ramp, be sure to look in this direction. So mm -hmm. I do think that that a lot of this stuff is is planned mm -hmm. down to the, the, the smallest little uh, detail. And yeah. yeah, I mean, I think two years ago I was calling the Bloodline one of the greatest long-term storylines in, in, in wrestling history. And here, two years later, it's still going. And yeah. there are peaks and valleys. It's not like it's been consistently Agreed. like uh, uh, the most interesting thing, but they're able to um, keep on revisiting it and, and it's still being interest, interesting yep. and have these different peaks. And I think War Games is going to... Um, I almost feel bad for Cody because like it, it's going to be assuming he's not part of it. And I don't think he should be. I mean, I, I, no. I think he move on. I, I don't want yeah. him to be this guy, you know, he's got his thing with Kevin Owens and, and that's fine. I mean, I think this should be a payoff, um, but I, but also maybe not the payoff because at some mm. point we still have to see Roman versus solo. Right. I don't yeah. know. I mean, that, that's, you have a thought about wh how, when they do that, do, do, do you, think maybe that's wrestlemania mm, but then you got to think about the rock is he even available there's a question right that. well i don't know about mania yeah but he still came out i don't even know what it meant that he did like he did yeah. something like i don't even know what that means like is he with it is he not with it like there's so many things but i can't remember a time where i was this genuinely interested in a long-term storyline in wwe i don't think maybe ever where i'm really like it can go in so many different directions and I'm actually like confident that WWE mm -hmm. will execute it well, which is like really exciting too. Yeah. yeah. 
and and, I, and maybe that means uh, the the original bloodline losing at war games. I mean, to, to kind of stretch it out mm. a little further. But yeah, I mean, th there's so many more chapters. Another one we have to talk about is, is Paul Heyman. Paul Heyman, you know, right? And, and he wears. They've he? done that. They've talked about kind of like the the how they're missing having a, a, a wise man. Yeah. And so I think you know, with with every week that they're able to put back a member. That's another huge, you know, development, another big chapter that gets the fans uh, excited. And for, for WWE, it's it's just, it's business. It's it's like, um, yeah, it, it's having a huge attraction every yep. few weeks. You know, who would have thought that, like, Jimmy Uso returning to TV would be, would have the, the gravitas that it did. But right. they've done such a good job um, with, with the storyline that that it, it was huge seeing Jimmy. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah, really fun. Um, all right. Uh, one last thing before, before we head out. Uh, a Bound for Glory uh, uh, this weekend as we're recording uh, TNA's biggest show of the year. TNA having something of a comeback over the, the last couple of years. I'm um, starting the last year with the return to the TNA um, uh, a brand. This is the first TNA Bound for Glory, I think, right? In, in I don't know how long. Mm -hmm. And um, the, the working relationship with, with WWE has been really beneficial. We saw the, the Motor City Machine Guns debut last week on Friday, which was a, a really cool um joe henry going for for the the world title joe henry kind of a, a fun story for for tna uh, <laughs> uh this year like very much a homegrown guy you know kind of a, a an, an underneath guy who who you know we've talked about a couple times here got over on his own you know and and i think like for him the real moment was when he showed up on nxt earlier this yeah. year and everybody's yeah. chanting his music and i think not only WWE shot callers, but TNA shot callers are like, oh, <laughs> like we, we've got something here. Yeah. Yeah. And it's funny because he went from someone that I had never heard of to yeah, someone same. where I feel like I hear his music at least once a day or, <laughs> or someone's doing the, I'm yeah. like, when did this happen? But that's what makes me love wrestling so much because it could just be one of those things like where all of a sudden he's the biggest star. I do feel like they should capitalize on his yeah. momentum right now. I do think uh, if they do want to, um, you know, do the deed with him uh, at Bound for Glory, I think it makes a lot of sense. I do. I also think that it will do a lot for the partnership as well, because if he shows up in NXT with that championship, which yep. they've done before, that would be like the coolest thing ever. Yeah, like. you, you could do a, a, a champion versus champion thing. Mm. I mean, it, it it takes TNA um, kind of eating a little humble pie in that mm. what they're acknowledging is that we are peers to WWE's developmental system, right? So, I don't even think about it. <laughs> <laughs> but that's it, right? I mean, like, you, yeah. you don't, you're not seeing them, like, interact with, um, you know, I, I thought it was even interesting that, like, it, it's sort of funny that last year WWE fires Dolph Ziggler, um, then he goes to TNA, becomes their, their world champion, and now there's a working relationship with TNA. Right. So, like, <laughs> to theoretically show up on, on, on NXT as, as Nick Nemeth, I don't know. Um, but uh, yeah, I mean, when's the last time that like TNA created a star, you know, like was right. really like, um, you know, you could say Josh Alexander and some others, but but it, it really feels like in, in part because of the, the WWE exposure uh, that they've got something special with Joe Henry. And yeah, I think they should strike while the iron is hot. And, and, and I hope and I assume that they do. Same, same. Yeah. yeah. Uh, all right. Thanks so much. And what do you want to promote? You got your own podcast. You got your own thing going on. I want you to uh, tell uh, our uh, viewers, readers, what you got going on. Sure. Uh, so I host a show every Monday night before Raw called Where WWE Meets Pop Culture. So I talk about all the wrestling news that happens outside of the ring while also spotting all your favorite WWE celebs at NFL games, courtside at basketball games, maybe who they're dating, you know, that kind of fun stuff. Uh, and then, of course, Krista B and I uh, stream weekly on Wednesdays and Fridays. Uh, if you are not following those wrestling girls, make sure you do. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit that bell for notifications. Um, what do we have coming? Uh, we have a lot coming up, so just make sure you follow if you love women's wrestling. Um, 
Um, join our community on Twitter, uh, threads. I'm really liking threads, by the way. If you are not on it, there's a lot of wrestling fans on there that are relatively sane. So if you want to talk some women's wrestling, join us over there. Um, make sure you pick up the latest PWI issue. Uh, the digital issue is out right now. And make sure you get your physical copy because there is nothing better than holding an issue of Pro Wrestling Illustrated. Um, and I just want to thank you, Al, and Kristen, and everyone over that um, have welcomed me into the family with open arms for uh, so many years, and I really appreciate it. Absolutely, a great addition. So thank you so much. Uh, we will do it again soon. Um, as she said, check out PWI-online for all things PWI. Pick up the latest issue, and we will see you again soon. Bye.